Well, what's up, everyone? My name is Robert. I'm here with uh, John from Bulldog Mindset. How you doing, buddy? Doing good. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, the, you know, it seems him and I were talking before we got on the show here. It seems like we're doing a lot of kick-ass things and everything. And uh, just happy to be back here again doing another show to help you guys out. And um, I know what we wanted to talk to you guys about with today is like some of the, you know, dealing with adversity, like when you're, you know, in the dating and life and when you're trying to focus on yourself because i think that could be um a challenge though for some guys who want to go and have success in life I mean, when they face adversity because they they just don't have the right mindset to keep them going right exactly so um yeah i mean so what why do you think why do you think like some guys just have a hard time maintaining that mindset yeah, I mean, I think that like, you know, you it, it, it depends on how you're conditioned to handle adversity, which depends on how much how you've responded to it in the past. Right. So some people get a defeatist kind of victim mindset. A lot of people have that defeatist victim mindset and they see adversity. They see uh, setbacks or failures as as going the wrong path or they screwed up or this shouldn't have happened. Uh, instead of seeing it as, okay, I figured out something that didn't work or I gained something from this experience. I, this is part of my path and part of my progress. So I think a lot of it has to do with how you view things. Like if you expect, uh, I did a video a while back ago, just remind me where I was talking about, you know, if you, uh, if you want an easy life, do hard things. If you want a hard life, do easy things, right? And so it comes to that expectation. If you have, expect that you're not going to face adversity, if you expect that things are just going to work out that it's going to be easy for you, you, you feel like entitled to that, then when stuff does happen, when you do face adversity, it's going to crush you because you weren't prepared for it because you expected something else. But when you expect that life is going to be hard, when you expect that there are going to be unknowns that are going to hit you, when you expect that you're going to get rejected, that that's, that's the default and that you're going to have to go through those things, then you're equipped to handle them. Then you see them as the steps that are going to get you to success. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so you think too, like, you know, so it's like this, you know, a lot of guys then just like have that expectation. Um, you know, I actually talked about this on a webinar I did last night. Um, but, you know, I think I was talking about like, you know, I was talking about the five pillars of self-confidence because, you know, my book's coming out soon. That's the title of the book. And, um, um, you know, like a lot of, you know, I think a lot of people like, and this is some, you know, you know, challenge that I had too. I mean, but I overcame it, but like, I, you know, I had that expert. Okay. Like I worked with a mentor, I read something in a book and I'm just like, well, Hey, if, if I go out there and do that and take the action, then I'm going to get it. But when I, I, when I first started, you know, going on this journey in my life, when I, you know, was t approaching a girl and, you know, I wasn't getting a date or maybe I reached out to a potential client for my web design business and I wasn't getting a lead. It just like I, I've slipped back into my old ways of thinking. And, um, you know, I, I was able to have the discipline to get crawl out of that. But most guys don't. So but that's true. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think with a, with a lot of things, kind of the framework that I use for a lot of things is I always think that everything is a numbers game. Right. Because it doesn't matter like where you are right now for, for guys that are watching this, like wherever you're at in terms of your your achievements in life, your uh, let's say your looks your you know your status your money your game all of those things you are there is some number right there's some number in which if you do this many approaches let's say that you will get a result right it might be a very big number right if you're at the bottom if you haven't worked on anything if you don't have any self-confidence if you're you know uh short and ugly and fat or what you know what i mean it might be one out of ten thousand that might be the, what the number is to be honest i mean it's probably not that number but but well, yeah you don't have the experience like you got you, i mean i think when you um yeah you're right because when you go out there like it's going to be a numbers game but i i think too like the more experience you gain the more that chance the chances will increase when you think so that's what yeah exactly that's where i'm getting at is basically that let's say it's one in ten thousand well you can do something 
right? Let's say that you do something small, like you improve, you, you lose 10 pounds. So now maybe it's come down to one in 8,000, right? I mean, and then you do something else and you, you become better at your, at your game. You become better at opening and approaches. You're not as nervous. Now maybe it's one in 5,000, right? And it's like, and again, those are really, really large numbers. It, it's, it's not that, that extreme, but the thing to realize is that there is some number to it. It's the same thing with sales, right? With business. Cause Game and, and marketing and business is exactly the same same thing. It, the same rules apply because that's all you're doing when you're when you're out there uh, in in the in, in the in the dating world is that you are you are essentially selling yourself. You are marketing mm-hmm. yourself, right? And and that's the product that you have. And so you know, in any kind of marketing situation, you have the you know, you've got the product, right? You've got the the leads, like the number of leads, and then you've got the marketing aspect of Mm -hmm. it right and so if you improve those aspects of that funnel like if you improve the number of of leads the quality of the leads right and you're in a good environment you improve your ability to market which is is game or you improve the product it is going to reduce the number of of tries you have to to have success and so those things you can develop over time and you can increase those things and you i just keep it in my head that i'm like you know for everything that i'm doing in life that it's just some number it's not that i can't do it it's just that I have some probability of success and I want to do things that are going to increase my probability of success. And that empowers me because then I know if I make just a small improvement, I am still improving and there is some success there. Right. And, and especially helps, I think, a lot in business because a lot of my coaching clients, they get frustrated. They're like, oh, yeah, I'm never going to no one wants to buy my product or no one wants to watch my channel or, or whatever it is. And it's like, no, no, no. There's some there's some number right out there. Maybe you have to cold call a hundred people and one person will buy, but then that's fine because that means if you cold call a thousand people, you get ten sales, right? And you can improve that process, get to the point where maybe it's one in fifty, maybe it's one in thirty, whatever it is, whatever. It, when you know that, that empowers you because then it stops it from. I think that the mentality of saying no, I can't do this, or I will fail, or I will be rejected to there's some probability of this, right? It, it's just, I haven't gone out enough tries and now you can now you can be on a path where you can improve that so you can make it so that it it, it requires less tries for anything that you're doing in life to be successful, so. Mm-hmm. Right, and that just, that a lot of that involves just being persistent and like, mm-hmm. you know, pushing forward despite like, you know, all the hardship that you're facing and stuff, right? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, persistence is key because you you have to keep on pushing forward. If you have the the mentality that you say, I'm not going to try this, I'm going to make this work, then you're going to get there. Because when you when you think to yourself, I'm going to make this work, that's where you get that persistence. Because if you knew it was possible and you knew you just had to keep on going, then you would do it. Right. I saw this this video that someone had posted on Facebook of this kid uh, teaching himself to do a backflip. He had like this mattress on the, on the street and, and, and stuff. And it was like, I forget what it was. I think it was like a hundred and, and something tries that, that he, he was able to do a backflip. And it, it record, he recorded every try that he did from his first try to his hundredth hundred try. And that reminded me, you know, just this really important thing is like, if you believe that if you put in enough work, you will reach the end result then you're going to have the persistence to get there. If you feel like you're not making progress or there, there's no way you're going to get there, you're not going to persist. Right. Right. I think too, like, I mean, in order to kind of keep you going, being persistent, you, you, because, you know, I think it's important that in one of the things that I talk about is like when you're being persistent, that I've learned is like, you know, I like to go out and try new things every time I thought something doesn't work. So, you know, for instance, if I go like, you know, do like a, you know, because I've done a, like a lot of email, you know, cold emailing, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, I, and, you know, I wasn't working at first, but I just tried to like kind of, you know, assess like, okay, how can I make this better? Or like the same thing when approaching a, a girl's like, you have an interaction, it may not have gone well. And you got to think to yourself how you, you can avoid making the mis- same mistake. Because I think if you're not aware that you're having that mistake, you can uh, repeat the same behavior and therefore not get the result that you want. Exactly. Yeah. You have to do an analysis. I, I think a lot of people sometimes, though, they do the analysis too soon. They assume that if they're not getting results, that they must be doing something wrong. Sometimes you can be do, doing everything right, but it's just a probability. It's just that you, it, it's just odds that you're, you know, so you have to be able to make the distinction. There's a really good book on this. 
subject called Thinking in Bets. It's by Annie Duke. She was a professional poker player. And she talks mm-hmm. about how when something goes right, when you win, when you're successful in life, you need to analyze, you need to say what percentage of that was skill and what percentage was luck. And the same thing when something goes wrong, right? Because psychologically, we tend to say that our wins are because of skill and our losses are because of luck. But we mm-hmm. have to fight that urge. We have to look at it and say, okay, if I, if I did not succeed, uh, sometimes it's my fault. Sometimes it's because of skill, but sometimes it is because of luck. And so we have to differentiate those. So then we can actually analyze and say, okay, well, what, what is the skill element and what is my execution on that? If I'm mm-hmm. missing something, if I made some mistakes there, then I can prove it. But we can't look at results in order to determine that. They can give right. us a hint towards it, but we have to look at what is the correct action you know, instead of just, we're trained to look at results, right? That That's that's the whole thing is we have to get out of that thinking and instead look at, okay, what is the correct action? And then interpret that and then determine, okay, well, in what percentage is luck? What percentage is skill? Right, exactly. So so it's kind of like you're differentiating, differentiating the two of them, like what, you know, what percentage is skill and what percent, percentage is luck? And so luck, so you're saying like a certain percentage could be, just going out there doing doing whatever it is and then like the luck is just like you know the action you know how many times it took it before you got lucky is that is that what you mean kind of kind of like being the persistent and everything and finally getting a result that you want exactly like yeah if you took you know the dating like you know cold approach uh you know you could go out right and you could cold approach let's say 10 women okay and if you're unlucky that night maybe like maybe all 10 of them have boyfriends, like legit have boyfriends. Like there would have been nothing that you could have done in that circumstance that would have resulted in, in a, in a win. So you might go home defeated and say, Oh, I messed up. I didn't do something right. Uh, but it, it may be a luck factor, right? So then you have to analyze and say, what did I actually do? You know, was this correct? Uh, you cannot just look at the results, you know, over the long time, the results will tell you if you're doing things right, but in the short term the results will trip you up. It's the same thing again, like, you know, poker players right a a poker player who loses a hand that doesn't mean that they made any mistakes in that hand just likewise a poker player that wins a hand doesn't mean that they played right they may have played wrong and got lucky but over a thousand hands uh if they're consistent winner then they're doing something right if they're consistent loser they're doing something wrong Mm -hmm. right and they just have to be able to be aware of that and everything but do do you think most people like uh don't look you know look hard enough and that's why they fail to find the answer you think or yeah i I think that uh that they just look at the result right that they just take one shot at it and if they don't get a result they assume that they did something wrong or that they they messed up and if they do get a result they assume they did something right but those are not correct uh assumptions you have yeah so they should just kind of ignore the result and look away outside the result the fact that you're saying that the fact that we're so focused on the result, I mean, that could, uh, you know, affect the way we perceive what, you know, a situation and action, how we view ourselves, right? Instead, we got to look away from that. Yeah. Yeah. That's why one of my mantras is to trust the process, right? You have to come up with a process that is going to get you most likely to give you success. And then you have to trust that process. You cannot be looking at the results. In the long term, you look at the results and, and say, that's how you judge the process. But you have to trust the process long enough to see uh, whether or not it, it works. You cannot just take one action and then look at the result and say, yes, this is right or yes, this is wrong. Uh, mm-hmm. Instead, you're gonna trust the process and then go back and evaluate you know, a larger scope of, of things. That's that's where, where people get tripped up. Mm-hmm. Do you think, too, I don't know, do you think too, like a lot of like the reasons why something might not go accordingly is because people like when they're working on whatever it is, just don't have that, you know, I, mean, I think we've touched on a, a little bit about this in our last uh, uh, conversation, but like, you think if they just don't believe in the process that it is possible and it, it, since they don't like have that one, you know, believe 100% that, you know, it's, you know, it's, they're not going to produce that actual result is that, you know, the, the, you know, more thinking like the mindset affecting. Yeah, uh, the belief. Yeah, the belief is super important, right? So that's where like reference experiences come in into play, right? right? So if you've had success before, you know that you can have success again. If you've never had success, then your goal in anything, whether it be in pickup in in business, you know, is to get one success, right? A, a lot of my coaching clients, when I'm coaching them on business stuff, 
I tell them, let's just make one sale. Like, don't forget about everything else. Just let's just get you one success. The same thing with, with dating. Like, let's just get you one success, right? Because it, you once you have one success, then you know you believe it's possible. The more success that you have, the more you believe it's possible. You know, imagine that you're a door-to-door salesman selling vacuum cleaners or, or something like that or, yeah. or whatever. And you, you're only going to sell one out of 100 doors that you knock on, right? So you could knock on 80 doors and get... 80 rejections and then be like, no, I'm, <laughs> this isn't working. It's, it's, it's never going to work. No one will ever buy. Uh, but you, what you didn't realize was that you didn't understand the law of numbers. You, you didn't understand that, that you act, you actually have a ratio of one out of a hundred. So you were, mm-hmm. you were actually achieving success. You just hadn't given enough time. So, so that's, that's the key is, is looking at it from that perspective and realizing that it, you, you've got to have enough, uh, you know, enough sale, you know, you, you got to have enough, uh, experiences to get a solid reference experience because again with that scenario with the door-to-door salesman if that door-to-door salesman knocks on 500 doors and he gets five sales now he has confidence now he understands that yeah okay it's just one out of 100 so when he gets rejected 80 times in a row it's okay because he knows that out of every 100 i'm gonna i'm gonna get sales it's just gonna happen so right no and that's how it's true I'm, you know i think one thing too is i i'm kind of get guilty on this because i've just got so many projects going on that like you know, we take the action, but we don't take enough action. And therefore, you know, and therefore, that's why it's taking longer to get the result that we want because we're not putting in enough action to um, get us the result that we want because we're just right. like so scatterbrained doing this and that. Yeah, and that and that again comes down to the belief, right? Uh, you know, if you if you don't believe it is it, going to work, that, that you're then you're not going to be committed. You're not going to take enough action. Right. If, but if you believe that it's certainly possible and that you can do it, you're going to take a, as much action that's necessary to get the result. Uh, and, and that's what it really comes down to. That's why that belief is so, so important. And that's why it's also really good to start with small wins. Right. You can, you right. can set yourself exactly. up, yeah. success, yeah. you know, and like, you know, with with guys with cold approach, a lot of times the guys that I am coaching, I tell them that your success criteria, let's change it. Let's not make it. You get her number. Let's not make it. You know, you close whatever let's make the success criteria that you go and talk to her, that you just face something that is difficult for you. You put yourself in an uncomfortable situation because when that becomes a success criteria, then you can set yourself up for success and then you can win and win. And then you can get in your mind that you're a winner. And then now you can raise the bar, but you've got to say, exactly. And you know, that's, that's what I did when I first started doing a lot of cold approach or whatever. Um, I just go out there like I just started just by saying hi to girls and stuff. Or, yeah. And then I took another step, made a comment um, about like just complimented them, whatever it was. And the third one was just to have a conversation, then go for a number and everything. Yeah. And then it still and, and then I still kind of challenged myself because like when I was first doing it, I had a mentor who was coaching me uh, on a cold approach. I mean, I worked with him for about two years and stuff. But I used it like a like a script that he gave me, but then I learned to just kind of like get out of that script. You know what I'm saying? Like to be more authentic in my approach. Yeah. So, but no, I, I do, that do, that, that is a good point though. Like I think in order to build those reference experiences, like it's good to have like small successes to show that, Hey, you're c- capable of accomplishing something rather than nothing. It, um, and then like when you kind of like go there and you have that success work on something bigger and then you can blow your mind away and say, well, fuck, yeah, I can, do, you know, I did this. And then what, what can you do next? You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. But you think, um, I don't know, one, you know, one of the challenges, you know, I faced, you know, when I was getting learning this stuff a while ago was just getting out of like uh, my comfort zone to do it. Cause like when you like, I, I mean, it's like, I could just feel like the anxiety building up. It, it was probably because I wasn't used to it, you know, mm-hmm. uh, or, you know, just like about the beliefs again, just talking about beliefs again. And, um, and it was just like, when I was able to challenge that, you know, it just it made me more confident as a guy just realizing that, Hey, it's okay to like go approach girls. It's in, you know, who get, you know, cause I always think, I don't know. The guys come to you with this problem. Like, you know, a lot of them are afraid to approach the girl because they're worried about whether she's going to be like afraid of him or, you know, just be rude towards the guy. Do they they come to you like that? You know, they they kind of project into the future. Yeah, they they come up with all kinds of excuses 
or, or reasons. And, and that's fine. Like, cause your, your brain can manufacture as many of those as you need, but they still at the end of the day result in, in not getting what you want. And so that's why you have to just say, well, it doesn't matter. Like you have to really have the mindset that you, you gain success, you gain growth when you come outside of your comfort zone. So it doesn't matter. You know, all you have to do is take the step to go outside of your comfort zone because okay. over time, continually putting yourself outside of your comfort zone, you will experience growth. And, and a person that continually experiences growth will experience success. Those, those are the things that you know for sure. That's true. And that's why, you know, it doesn't matter what you're doing, what field you're in. You know, if you are persistent, like we, we talked about earlier, if you commit to an action, you will eventually get there. You're, you're smart enough. Your brain is automatically a goal seeking mechanism. You know, Dr. Maxwell Maltz talked about this in psych, psycho cybernetics, you know, many years back. But you your brain will automatically like a heat seeking missile will will uh, will navigate its way to success when you have that success, that goal in mind. And you just keep on going down the path. Like yeah. so you just have to trust that. And then and then keep on going forward, putting yourself in into outside of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. And then you got to I, I think, too, like you got to develop the discipline to do it, too. You know, to say yeah. you're going to do it despite like how you feel, because most people like are like, I don't I'm just having a bad day I, or I'm caught in my head. I, I can't you know, I, don't, I can't talk to anyone. I mean, you just got to do that regardless. Like exactly. I, I, one excuse I used to give myself all the time is like I'd be like too tired. Like I go like to the like store after work. I just like drain, and, uh, you know, but I, you know, eventually I just said to myself, Hey, if I really fucking want to do it, I'll fucking go do it. You know, I'm not going to give myself excuses. And you know, and it's weird. Cause like I, I, I have those aha moments. Cause I like to, you know, sometimes, you know, I wake up in the middle of the night. I don't know. I do, this happens occasionally, maybe once or twice a month, but I'll, I'll just reflect on things that are going on in my life. Yeah. I guess because it's very quiet, you know, and I could like, you know, meditate. It's like no one's no sound or my dog's not bothering me. But, you know, I kind of like, you know, like like when I thought to myself, well, well why I said when I'm working on something, what is the reason why I'm not, you know, getting ahead in this? And I just can kind of right away think why I, actions I've been taking in my life that, that haven't served me and what I need to get rolling on if I want to get there. You know, because like, you know, you wait, sometimes, you know, you, might, you get a little bummed out and then you're like, well, hey, it's your own fault. <laughs> you, you know, you you came up with the fucking excuses. You know, you're the one who, you're the reason why you're not getting this. And you feel like bummed out at the moment when you. <laughs> well, in one exercise, I think that that's useful in those situations. You know, you're feeling tired or whatever it is, whatever excuse you have is uh, is what I call calling it out. Right. So it's not the most effective thing for actually getting success, but it, it does help you. Uh, and it, it eliminates the pressure, right? So let's say you're feeling really tired and you, and you try to make an excuse, oh, I don't want to go out. I'm not going to approach because I'm, I'm feeling tired. So then just go and just go approach. And then when you approach, just say, man, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling really tired. I don't, I don't, I don't feel like uh, being out here, but I decided to just go out anyway. Right. So just call it out. Right. Or if you're nervous, be like, you know, go and talk to a girl and be like, Hey, uh, you know, I'm really nervous right now. Like it's, you know, it's funny, but I'm doing this anyway, you know, whatever, just call it out. I'm scared. You know what I mean? I, I'm having a bad day. Like I'm, I'm not in the mood to, to socialize, but I'm making myself socialize, whatever it is, call it out. You know, you call or, or something that you're insecurity, right? You're afraid that, uh, so, that, you know, uh, I, you know, whatever it is, like you have some insecurity, like, oh, you know, my, my, my nose is too big or whatever, you know, just call it out. <laughs> um, and, and again, it's not an exercise that necessarily is going to get you uh, success, but it will take the pressure off and then put you back into the zone where you don't have that. Because the worst thing to be doing is like, you know, I think we talked about this last time too, the, the difference between self, um, self, uh, uh, self-awareness and uh, self-consciousness, right? Mm -hmm. And when you are like feeling something, you're trying to hide it from someone, uh, you're self-conscious. And when you're self-conscious, you come up uh, as not confident at all, right? Because you're, you're, you're insecure, right? Mm -hmm. But being self-aware, now that that is something different, right? Because when you're self-conscious, you're in a conversation with someone and you're thinking about how are they thinking about you and how do you sound and how goofy are you or are you nervous? Are you, you know, all, all these things, how are they perceiving you? That's self-consciousness. But self-awareness is to be like, oh yeah, I'm nervous right now. Okay, I'm nervous right now. You know what I mean? Just to mm -hmm. bring it to the surface 
and then now you can start to act naturally and, and you're going to flow with the conversation. So like bringing it to the surface though, is that just like kind of saying that to yourself that, yeah, I am nervous right now. Right. So, so if I were say, I, I saw this girl and okay, yeah. this, so I'm reading you right in there. So I see this gorgeous blonde, you know, nice body and everything. I'm like, I gotta go talk to her. But then I'm like, Oh no, I'm self-conscious. And then I'm like, wait, I'm just being self. I just think that is, you know, you know, have that awareness and say, Oh, I'm just being self-conscious at the moment. Go for it. Is that what you mean yeah. by that? Yeah, but but also potentially to even just call it out to her, right? Just to make it aware. Like if you're in a conversation with someone and you know that you're nervous, just say that you're nervous. Now you can't be nervous anymore because you've just said it. You've just called it out, right? Mm -hmm. uh, no judgment. You, you're just saying it, right? Uh, whatever it is, just say the thing that you're thinking, that, that you're feeling that's making you self-conscious. And now you've shifted from self-consciousness to self-awareness because mm -hmm. someone already knows. Let's say you're in a conversation with someone and they're super nervous. Do you know that they're super nervous? Like, are, are they hiding anything? No, you, you can detect it, right? They're uncomfortable, whatever it is. So mm -hmm. if they now say, yeah, I'm, I'm super nervous. Okay, now, now, now you're not like worried about like, you know, how you're, now you're not self-conscious, right? You know what I mean? Now you're, you, now you're able to have a conversation with them and, and it's not like you, there's this underlying conversation happening mm -hmm. you know, beneath, beneath the, the yeah, because you're just like you're. I mean, you're being authentic with them too by just saying, "Hey, I'm a little nervous," you know. But I just had to come over and say hi. So, and then you're like, then it, I guess when you kind of like when you, when you say that, communicate that, you're kind of letting that feeling go or whatever it is go. Yeah, and the key to this, though, see, I think a lot of guys tend to misinterpret this when I give this exercise, is that they do this in a weak or insecure way, right? So, let's say that you're in the conversation with uh, with a beautiful woman. And you're nervous okay you should if you say i'm nervous you you need to not attach judgment to that you need to just say you know uh wow i i'm i'm really nervous right now and and you're okay with that like it's like okay cool i'm really nervous right now right as opposed to oh, i'm really nervous right now man i should i don't know like uh, like like you're looking for something right but when you're like no i'm really nervous right now i'm just saying you know you know then then it's cool then it's fine it's when you self-deprecate, when you feel bad about it, when you're attaching judgment to it. But if you attach no judgment to it, see that that's the way that you, you escape these things, right? If you that's the self, the true self-awareness, right? It's something that you do internally and you say, oh, you know, I'm angry right now to yourself, and that's fine, and you acknowledge it, no judgment. Uh, mm -hmm. but it's also something that you can externally do just to be authentic. Okay, I'm 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 this. Uh, it's it's all about how you do it. If you're doing it in a way where you're judging yourself for it, like you're feeling bad about yourself for being nervous, it, it's not gonna be good. But if you're like, ah, yeah, you know, this is a natural, I'm a human being. I have emotions. I feel nervous sometimes. I can't control those things. I feel scared, you know, wh whatever it is. And you just let that be what it is. Then, then that thing will pass. It's only, you know, you've probably heard, you know, what, what you resist persists, right? Mm -hmm. That's very true. So when you stop resisting it and you just let it be what it is, it doesn't persist anymore. Mm -hmm. Why do you think most people like want to resist that? Cause of this one that kind of, overcome that emotion is that why yeah because they're embarrassed about it because they don't want that to be the case but what we have to understand as human beings is that we cannot control our our emotions emotions are automatic responses we cannot directly control our emotions we can train ourselves to get into the habit of not producing negative emotions but we cannot control them when they're happening what we can do at that point is just accept them and let them be and 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 that's that's the thing is like if you can do that, then they will pass through you, right? There, there's basically three ways of, of handling emotion, right? One of them is to uh, express them, right? So I think of it as like a river coming at you, right? If a river mm -hmm. comes at you and you express emotion, you're like deflecting it into uh, into other people, like you're you're you're, you're letting it, it all go out, right? That's not so good, right? The, the second right. way is to repress it, okay? If you repress it, uh, then you're you're like you're, you're like trying to uh, to, to hold it back. Like I'm not going to, you know, you're, or, or you're taking it, you could think of it as taking it all in, right. You're repressing it. Right. Uh, but, but you're not letting it, you know, come out. But the, the third way is to process it, which is to let it flow through you, right. The river flows through you. You know what I mean? It doesn't, it, it, it comes, it mm -hmm. goes, right. That's how we're supposed to handle emotions. We're not supposed to express them. We're not supposed to repress them. We're supposed to process them. And when we mm -hmm. process them, that's when we accept it. And then it, it goes just like a river flowing through you. And that, that nervousness you're feeling, that anxiousness, that anger, whatever it is, you will feel it, you will experience it, and then it will flow through you and come out the other end. Right. So, uh, you know, another thing just came to mind too. So, you know, you know how most guys might be in a, in a situation 
uh, where they, they had that anxiety, but yet they just kind of muster up the courage. Is that, you know, to be like, oh, I'm going to be confident. And do you think that they're still like, you know, re they're repressing that? And do you think that would still affect the interaction and, should, and he would still project nervousness towards the woman as they're uh, engaging in conversation? Because like, even he's repressing that, um, you know, anxiety and trying to be confident and everything. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Sort of deep, yeah. You need to just be what you are at that moment. So if you're nervous or anxious, still take action, but just be that. Just allow yourself to be that. That's why I'm saying, like, even if you call it out and say, because everyone else knows you're nervous. So just say it. Just say, hey, I'm nervous right now. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I've done it before when I've gotten on stage. I've gotten on stage before uh, when I was in an experience of a, of a speaker. And I've, I've gotten up to give my talk and I've said, you know, I'm really nervous about this right now. Like, my heart is beating really fast. All right. Uh, but I said that as it's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. It's like, OK, hey, this is what it is. I'm human. Just like you're human. I'm human. I'm up here. I'm nervous. Instantly, you gain rapport with the audience. Right. Instantly, you gain rapport because they already know that. What's what's the worst thing in the world is to watch someone get up on stage and you know that they're nervous. They're stuttering over their words. Right. They're like they're trying to hide it. They're trying to act confident. And, you know, you're like, man, this is the worst speaker I've ever seen in the world. But if there's that subtle shift and they get up on stage and they say, oh, I'm really nervous right now. My heart is, is beating really fast. Now, all of a sudden, like you're watching them, you're cheering for them. You want them to do good, right? They're not thinking mm -hmm. anything anymore, right? And, and it's the same thing. When you're in interaction with a woman, do you think that she doesn't know you're nervous? Of course she knows you're nervous. So you just tell her you're nervous. So you just, you're just okay with it. It's fine. Now mm -hmm. you're now you're just shifted from nervous to confident because that's what true confidence is, is to not, not place a judgment on yourself. To say, however I am, whatever I am, that's okay. Right. I, I accept myself. Yeah, I so, think that's... But we tend to do, we judge ourselves a lot, you know, like, and we, and we judge, you know, the girl too, you know, we put it, we place a judgment on her, by the way, you know, we think how she's going to be, right. you know, I, I think that, though, that, you know, yeah, but you know, I like, I like your analysis because it's like, again, you're, because well, that, that's hard for a guy to tell a girl that, you know, he's nervous, you yeah. know, but I think by doing, I think by just being authentic and like releasing that, that eases the tension of the, and then you can have normal interaction rather than just like trying to go, okay, I'm just confident. Like, hey, yeah, hey, how's it going? You know, and then just totally blow up the interaction, you know? Because it, it's not about what you say, it's about what you, what you are and what you do and what you express, right? And so if you think about it, right, someone who is nervous and pretends to be confident, they come across as super not confident, right? They, they come across as incompetent, at, at, you know, but someone who does the opposite, someone who's nervous and then has the confidence to say that they're nervous, doesn't care. That's extremely confident, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, it's kind of funny how that, how that works, but it, but it's very true. And so, you know, I mean, obviously the goal is that, uh, is that you would actually just naturally exude that confidence, but the way that you do that is by accepting yourself exactly as you are not, not being self conscious, right? Becoming self-aware. That's the whole difference. When you make that shift from self-consciousness to self-awareness, that's where the confidence kicks in. Yeah. I like what, uh, shout out to uh, Joe from Proud Masculine here. He makes yeah. like a once you stay uh, nervous, loses his power exactly. and you actually relax. Yeah, I know, which is true. You're like, I mean, when you can admit that, like it loses that hold over you and everything. So do you, do, you, do you show a lot of your, do you teach a lot of your uh, guys you coach, do you tell them to actually like admit that during an interaction if they feel that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, authenticity is, is the most important thing. Now, again, mm -hmm. it may not necessarily get you results, right? But it's going to get you better results than, than otherwise. And it is what is true at that time. You know, if you are anxious or you are nervous, you can conquer that. But you're not going to conquer it by repressing it. You're not going to conquer it by pretending that you're not, that you're not pretending like you're not afraid. It, it, it'll be confronting it, allowing it to be, allowing it to hold its own space, and then letting it go, letting it be what it is with no judgment. That's that's mm -hmm. how you move past that and then actually develop that, you know, get rid of that where you, where you don't feel that anxiousness uh, anymore. Mm -hmm. Right. No, I hear you. Well, and I, and I think not just that, you know, not just that, but I think like, again, just going out there and building reference experiences like we were talking about earlier and just keeping on top of that. Cause you know, I, I just, you know, and you gotta, you know, I just realized like, you know, I, since I, you know, learned to just interact with a lot of girls over this past four and a half years or going on five soon and just not just with girls, but other people, I, I've been more confident, you know, socializing with strangers in general and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, 
and I owe that all just from like, you know, taking the risk and, you know, having the, the um, experiences too. Um, and, you, you know, a few times, yeah, I, you know, I have a, admitted to, I think to a girl to that during an interaction that, you know, it's a little nervous, you know, this is a little awkward, you know, but, but, you know, I, I know you're all talking about it. And I think, you know, that's just what we have to learn as guys to do, but we just find it. Why do you think we find it hard to like, I mean, it sounds like very easy to do like this is what we're talking about right now, but why do you think most guys struggle with that? Ego gets in the way. Ego gets in the way of our, our personal development process because we don't want to believe that about ourselves. We want to believe better about ourselves. We want to believe that we can will ourselves to not be nervous, to not be awkward, to not be those things, but we can't. And, and so when we drop the ego and we say, okay, where, wherever I am right now, just like we don't judge an acorn because it's not an oak tree, Right? It, it is where it is in its developmental stage. You are where you are in your deve de developmental stage. I'm where I am. Everyone is where they are. They can't help it. They are where they are. Now they can, they can help to advance. They can improve their situation. But wherever you are right now, it's fine. It's okay. It's where you are. Just like you know, an acorn is not an oak tree. You, you might be in the acorn stage or a sap sapperling stage. That's fine. Okay. So you accept that. You don't let the ego get in the way of trying to make you feel or think that you're bigger than you are you're not you're exactly what you are right now and that's totally okay and totally fine and when you're okay with that then other people will be okay with that then mm -hmm. women will be okay with that when you're not okay with that that's where the insecurity comes in and it doesn't matter how successful you are it doesn't matter what you've achieved it doesn't matter how good looking you are if you're not okay with where you are right now then other people won't that it will come across as insecurity so, you, so, so, like, so you're saying, like, to, to, if I'm hearing you right, dealing with, I understand what you mean by the ego, but like, so the dealing with the ego, so it, like, we just have to learn to accept where we're at, like, in general, who we are as guys and stuff, and not like try to project ourselves, like, compare ourselves to other people. I think that's a problem that we compare ourselves to other guys and stuff like that. And that kind of gets in the way of our ego. For instance, like, you know, a lot of guys will think if they don't, then they're not, they're not strong or they don't have like this amount of money that that girl's not going to want to talk to them. And, and the fact that we compare ourselves to other people, like it could, you know, that's the ego kind of getting in the way right there. And you're just like, you know, you know what I'm saying? And that exactly. kind of gets towards our self development. Yeah. Cause then you're trying to be bigger than you are. And you cannot, you, you, until you know where you are on a map, you cannot get to a destination, right? Because you don't know what, what route to go. If you're lying to yourself where you are on the map, you're not going to have any chance of getting to any destination. You have to be honest with yourself and honest with other people where you are right now. And it's, it's totally fine. Right. And, mm -hmm. and then you can make, make progress, but you can't make progress as long as your ego's in the way. And it's, it's telling you that you're, you're better than you are. And that's one of the struggles with a lot of the coaching clients that, that, uh, that I coach, a lot of guys I coach, they are, they're lying to me, right? My, the default is they're lying to me. And I tell guys all the time, I'm like, you're, you're lying to me. You're lying to me. Like you're, you're not, they tell me these crazy stories about their success with women when they're coming to me for help. And I'm like, stop lying. Like you're lying to me. You're lying to yourself. Let's be honest. Okay. You're nervous. You, you don't have confidence right now. You're afraid to approach women. You, you don't have success. You're insecure about yourself. Like you, you feel like you're not good enough. You feel like you're not attractive enough. Just let's just, let's just, that's where you are and that's fine. It's okay. But let's like, you need to be there and accept that so that you can grow. Because if you're trying to tell me that you're, uh, you know, seven feet tall and you're five foot 10, you're not going to, you can't, nothing is going to get you where you want to be. Right. It's just like if, if a guy comes in for business coaching and he's like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm super successful at business. I'm a, I'm a billionaire. And then it's like, okay, well, as long as you believe you're a billionaire, you're not going to become a millionaire. Like you're not going to, you, because you have to hold up this image of, of what you, what you want people to believe you are. So you can't actually learn and become what you, what you could have become. So you have to humble yourself to the point of recognizing this is where I'm at. In fact, I had one of these come to Jesus moments. I remember there was a, a time period when, it, when I first started really doing some cold approach and really learning game. And up to that point, I thought I was, I, I thought I was the, the man, right? I thought I was super yeah, cool. I'm John the man. <laughs> I was excuses in my head. I would, I would tell stories. I would say stuff, you know what I mean? Be like, and I just had this idea in my head that like this, this big inflated ego that like I was a super confident guy or whatever. And I could, I could talk to anyone. And then I, I remember one day I was running on the beach and this, this, uh, I ran across these girls and I was like, uh, the, this girl was really attractive and I wanted to go talk to her. And I was like, ah, nah, nah, you know, I just finished my run, whatever. Like I, I got it. And, and I thought to myself, I was like, John, are you what you say you are or not? Because like, like if, so what, whatever excuse you're saying right now, just do it. Like, it's not going to harm you to do it. So, so just do it. 
Like, just, even if you don't want to, just, just do it. Like, can you do it? And I was like, mm -hmm. no. and then I realized, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm BSing myself. I'm trying to think in my head that I'm this confident guy that would just like go and talk to anyone. And here I am making excuses. So it was a come to Jesus moment because I had to say, look, you either are or you aren't. So if you are, then go do it. And so I had to humble myself to realize that, no, you know what? All of this, you're pumping your own ego up. You're pumping your balls up, pretending like you were this guy, but you're not. So in that moment, that's where I came to the level of this is where I, I took an honest self-assessment. This is where I truly am. I'm afraid right now. I'm afraid in a lot of situations. And that's where I experienced growth because finally when I admitted it, now I could accept that accept that about myself. And now I could actually learn and grow. But as long as I was pretending like I already knew it all, like I was already there, there's no, there's no room for growth because what are you going to learn when you already have it? Right. So right. you have to drop that pretense and say, okay, no, this is where I am. And it's okay. And when you do that, that's when you experience growth. Right. No, you, you know, it's funny you, you um, uh, mentioned that because like, um, so I don't know. So like, I, you know, I've worked with the various coaches and been, you know, worked with different people in the, in the manosphere and everything, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, I've, I've learned a lot of different things, but, you know, you know, right. And right now I'm, I, I'm working with a cool, like, I don't know if you know who Steve the Dean is. Oh yeah. Yeah. He's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I work, you know, I work with him and like, no, I, I really like learned a lot about myself, like working with him, you know, yeah. like it's more of like, it more of like taught me to look, you know, look outside of the skills that, because I was taught like mostly skills and stuff. Right. How exactly. to talk to rather than focusing on me, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. then, this, and then, but he, I mean, he always, but one thing he made me aware of like a lot, you know, was, you know, cause I, I, I just, even though I was still going out there, he, he, you know, I, I was still like kind of like judging myself if the interaction didn't go well, or, you know, we're talking about, you know, judging, ourselves and other people and that's you know one habit i'm working on overcoming but i and i still have to, and when i go out there sometimes you know i have to call myself out in it too i have to like say hey i'm being judgmental right now right you know shut yeah. the fuck up and go do it <laughs> yeah it, it, it's it's you always have to think you're awesome and everything that you do is awesome but at a realistic level right where, where you're at you have to be like yeah good like even if you're just like at baby steps you have to be like yes i'm taking baby steps that's awesome like i'm, I'm awesome like you know i mean you have to be rooting for yourself chilling for yourself but also being being real right it, it's a hard it, it seems like a contradiction to a lot of people but but it, it really isn't right it, it's it's just saying like okay i am where i am and that's okay and i'm happy about it and i'm happy where i am right now and i'm happy for the person that i am and i think that i'm awesome where i am i'm not the guy that i want to become someday but I'm awesome right now because I'm on the path to become that guy. And right, exactly. I mean, yeah, and, I, and I'm still like, you know, working on myself in this area. I'm not, I'm not like 100% where I want to be here with with where with the girl situation. But I've had a lot of successes. But I, I, I know I, I would say to myself I could do better. So I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, well, what are, what are the challenges I got to do to get to the next level? Because like I was telling you, like a lot of this, like a lot of this stuff was all that I learned. Most. Well, I learned, you know, communication and social stuff. And, you know, like my one mentor, he did challenge me to like, you know, for get, get this, you should do this one for uh, your clients. Um, he had me go uh, approach women in Victoria's Secret <laughs> or in a makeup store where, you, yeah. you know, you're like the only the only guy in there. Right. And I didn't want to do that. It took me like a couple months to do it. But I mean, it's so weird because after I. I did that like it, it. I didn't get anxious about it anymore, and I, I, you know, I, you know, after that one experience, I still, um, I went into like Victoria's Secret <laughs> time to girls. I just didn't. I, I just, I had a different. It, you know, it was, it was my mind saying, "Well, this is, you know, this is gonna freak girls out." When I mean, really that wasn't. I, you know, just when I challenged that and didn't see that was the situation. Exactly. You know, it, it like made it, you know, made me feel better and. It, it's weird because like your mind can just really fuck up your perceptions on things in life. And I think we got to challenge it. I think, you know, I think that's always been like, I think my biggest issue is like the mindset thing. Cause like, I mean, you can still like have these successes and you get, you feel good and you're like, yes, but sometimes there's certain things that can just push you back into your old behavioral patterns. And then you got to have that awareness. Cause like, if you don't have that awareness, you get like sucked in back into that. And it, you know, you, you, you can either take you off your path or it can just slow your learning, your growing process. Exactly. Yeah. The solution to all problems is awareness. That's solution to all problems in life is, is awareness. All evils in life, all, uh, 
you know, the, the mistakes that people make, there's no such thing as evil. There's only a lack of awareness, right? All, all the things that we mess up, that, that we that we screw up when we hurt people, we harm ourselves. Uh, it's all a lack of awareness. The more awareness that we have, and that really, your goal is just to gain awareness. Because as you gain awareness, your your actions will will become correct. Right, so. exactly. Well, you know, I'm always glad, you know, I'm always glad I, I study, you know, I, I did like meditation and all that stuff because I think it kind of, you know, prepared me to like have awareness. And like, I mean, even like, you know, you know, even my mentor told me to real, like, you have to realize, you know, you have to realize certain things that are holding you back. And you, you got in, okay, are you, you know, are you going into back into your old behavioral pattern? If so, you got to get out of there. And like, I, I, you know, and I can train myself to get out of there. I mean, I'm just, but you know, I just, before, like a while, you know, before I really got that down, like it was a struggle, but you know, even when you get in there, you're just like getting, it takes a little bit of time to get out of it. But you no, know, it, it's good to have that awareness. Cause I think once I mean, you have awareness it's about like certain like mindsets and attitudes you're having about life. I mean, you can get back on path because you got it because, you know, a lot, I, I think a lot of guys who are in this space, like, you know, they just have a negative perception about themselves and the world around them. I mean, I know that because I was there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, you, and, you, and, you, and I think they want to go make that change in their life. And when they go there, they're, they're seeing those successes, but sometimes they get pulled back into those like old, you know, ways of thinking about things. So I think that the mind, I think the battle of the mind's like the biggest uh, challenge out of every, all the other things. It absolutely is. But, um, but no, I mean, but, I, but that's true though. Like, I, and I think like, I don't know. So, and, you know, we're, I was talking about yes, yesterday on a webinar, he was, was talking about the growth mindset and the fixed mindset. And, right. and, you know, and, you know, I noticed, you know, a lot of you know when i was working with some mentors they had to take on clients and they teach them everything but they just didn't believe it they believed things were set but you know that so they, they always give you a test to see if you're even worth their time to see if you want to grow because i mean there's a lot of people who um you know want to have success whether it be business women or fitness but you know they don't they're stuck in their fixed mindset and you they can't break out of that and you know, I think I'm just fortunate enough, and I'm sure you are, just to kind of have that growth mindset to kind of like, you know, just figure out, well, hey, you know, I want to make the change. I'll do whatever it takes and open to trying new things. Because I think, I think like when you, when you have a growth mindset and you're truly growing and plus you're living life rather than being stuck in your old way of thinking. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's critical. You know, um, Carol Dweck wrote the, the book Mindset, New Psychology of Success, and, and she talks about that, the, the growth mindset versus the fixed mindset. Mm -hmm. And that growth mindset is, is so critical. So many people have this fixed mindset or they have it in certain areas of their life. Uh, a good example of this, I think, for, for someone to see the power of the growth mindset is if you want to, to practice this, go like if you can't juggle right now. What, what I want you to do is I want you to go and take three so pairs of socks, balls of socks, right? And I want you to take a whiteboard. Or, socks right now. <laughs> no, I'm yeah. All right. And, and I want you to like, you know, to just look real quick up what, what, how you're supposed to juggle, right? I mean, you, you kind of know, like you throw one up, throw one up, you know, catch the third one, right? So, so, so what I want you to do is I want you to just commit to trying to juggle 1,000 times. You're going to write it down. You're just going to make a tick every time that you do it. So, you know, get a whiteboard, like one tick, you know, okay, mm -hmm. two three, or you can count it off and you're just going to keep on trying. You're not going to worry about results until you get to a thousand. Before you get to a thousand, you will be able to juggle. <laughs> okay. Uh, everyone will be able to. Well, yeah, right? you're, you're putting in the reps, right? Yeah, exactly. So th that's the thing. It's like everything in life works like that. There is nothing in life that if you don't put in the rep that you're not going to improve, right? Mm -hmm. you, know, you might not necessarily get where you want to be, but you will improve. And, uh, and, and that's, that's the goal is that that's what we have to do is just, that's, you know, the growth mindset is just saying, yeah, it, it doesn't matter if I do something a bunch of times, I will at least improve some amount. And, and that, and that's the encouragement that, you know, it's when you have that fixed mindset, you're like, oh no, it doesn't matter. No matter what I try, I'm going to fail. I'm not going to, I'm not good at this. I'm not, I, I don't have this skill. Uh, everything that I am now, I was not before, right? I, I am in shape now. I'm not lazy. I, I, I was shy as hell. <laughs> I was the most shy guy. I wouldn't even talk to a doctor on the phone to make an appointment. And now for a living, I am on video all the time, talking to people, coaching people. All I do is communication now. That, that mm -hmm. is my, my business. 
but it's because I put in the reps to do that. So like, you know, I didn't stop at I'm shy, right? I, I, I did originally, but then I said, no, you know, what? just like any skill, like any other person, I can develop this skill if I put in the reps. And that's the same thing with, with everything in life. That's, that's the solution. It's just, you have to know that if you put in reps, you will improve. Right. No, I agree. I, I think, you know, I look at myself too, like, you know, like I, you know, I, I, I was still social, I would say, but I was still a little shy, but like, you know, when I went out this being social, like I got more interact, you know, interact with people. I, I organized, uh, I don't know if you, you know what meetup is at all. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. but I, I'm an organizer of an event, but I network with other people when we, you know, we get to do events at nightclubs and stuff like that. And I get right. to meet like a whole bunch of people and, you know, and I, I, I tell the people, like, when they ask why you did the group, I was like, well, because when I came to Arizona, I didn't know too many people. I was, you know, kind of shy for, you know, I was, even though I was outgoing, I was still a little shy, but I like just bringing people together, you know, just having one socialized because I just know what it's like and everything. I, I even, you know, there, there's even a few people um, who have been in my group who have just, you know, they, they just have a hard time being social. And I just encourage them to be social with some of the stuff that, you know, I've learned. It, it, was, it was so weird. There's this one guy. I'll never forget, like, he came to one of my events. He sat all alone at another table. And, I, and like, I went over there. I'm like, hey, man, come look, go over here and socialize with all the people. Like, hey, how's it going, Bernie? And um, he didn't, like, um, it's like, no, nah, I'm just going to stay here and, uh, you know, watch the trains, and you know, because you know, there are trains going by. <laughs> and so I, I was bringing some of the other people over just to get them to warm up. Um, and, and so I, I, you know, he's like, okay, cool. And he just said, and I, I just said, to, so I did a, vi I did a video on my channel, like on how to be more social. I'm like, here, you got to watch this video. It's like, oh, this is so cool. You got a channel and everything. And I, I don't know what it was, um, but at, I think I saw him two or three weeks later at one of my events. And this guy was just being inter interacting with everyone. Right. This is so weird. But, you know, yeah. I, I, maybe it's the encouragement, but like, or something he learned in the video, but he seemed like, you know, totally different from what he was like at the first event. But, you know, I think, I don't know if he went on and started to talk to people or whatever. But um, no, that that's just how it goes. Like, you just got to go put on the reps. You, you got to, you know, have that awareness. And I think when you can... You know, have, you know, develop the discipline too, and just kind of go out there and make the experiences happen in your life, and be open to changes, and kind of be present, like you were saying, with letting the emotions, the you know, and authentic by letting the emotion go through. Like I think, you know, you know, the more you can discipline yourself to do this, you can fail with adversity when it comes to dating or in business. Exactly. Yeah, because you see that, then you start to see adversity as a rep. Right. As, as a stepping stone, it is it is the thing that is making you make progress. Right. If you go to the gym and you don't put any weight on the bar, you're not going to make progress. Right. The weight on the bar is not your enemy. It's your friend. It, it is helping you. Right. You're going to fail. You're, you're not going to continue to do reps. That failure is what causes growth. So adversity mm -hmm. is the same thing. When you see adversity in life, you shouldn't be thinking, oh, this is a bad thing. You should be thinking, oh, this is good. This is something that I'm pushing against. It's giving me resistance in order to grow. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, any uh, final thoughts here before we uh, end the show? I know we're getting close to the 8 o'clock hour here. Um, I'm trying to think. what. what um, I mean, I, I guess the biggest thing is is it's just – you know, when you when you encounter a difficult situation, something that that seems that you are not going to make progress in, that you feel like a failure, be honest with yourself where you're at right now. That's the first step is know where you are right now. Accept it. Number two, accept where you are right now. Be OK with yourself. Think you're awesome because you are an acorn right now and you're going to become an oak tree someday. That's a good thing. And then and then third, realize that if you continue to put in the work, if you continue to put in the reps, you cannot help but grow. You will grow and you will make progress. And you you might not be as good as you want to be, but you'll be better than you were before. And that compounded growth is, is the secret to success. Anyone who has created success in any area of their life has been a result of that compounded growth. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that, that's very deep. And that, that's so true. And that's, I mean, that's what you got to do. Um, I was going to, you know, one thing very quickly though. So what would you say about those? I mean, you, you know, people who just kind of like maybe they they keep going at 
trying what they're doing and stuff, but yet they still they think that you know their circumstance they can't succeed because of their circumstances. Because there's just thing in society that you know people believe well because they weren't born into a rich family or they were born like you know handsome that they can't have an attractive woman or they can't you know have like a business that they want. And, and that, maybe they'll go out there and they'll t- they'll take the action and stuff, but they'll just continue to not produce that result. Like, what do you say? And then, what, and then someone, they, they say this stuff, well, I just can't do it because I was born. I, I gave up because I'm, you know, you know, I wasn't born to like deserve this. You know, do you think it's just a mindset thing or do you think? Uh, yeah. You know, what I would say about that is, you know, I'm, I'm probably not going to become as rich as Elon Musk. It's too late for me. You know, I'm mm-hmm. 41 years old. It's too late, right? Uh, it, it's it's not it's not a reality, really, or, or Bill Gates. But I don't need to become as rich as as Elon Musk or Bill Gates to be successful in life. All I need to do is become better than I am now, right? So mm-hmm. it's not too many people look at the world. They look at where other people are and what they're doing, or they look at they're like, oh, all the chads out there, or whatever. Or these guys that have massive success with women, or they're super tall, or what, whatever it is. Or, or, or they're born into a good family and, and they started with money or whatever it is. Okay. None of that matters because you cannot compare yourself to, to other people. That's not your measure of success. What matters is, is, is your growth. And so wherever you're at right now, even if you're flat broke, if you're not making any money at all, you're not having any success with women, uh, that, that's actually a good place to be because that means that you have a lot of room to grow. And so you can become better than that. So wherever you're at right now, if you're not happy with your life right now, well, you can improve your circumstances. And if you're, you'll be less unhappy with your life. You see what I'm saying? And so like, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what hand you were dealt because you can't control that. What matters is how you played the hand. What did you do? And did you improve your circumstances? Right? So if you started off with, you know, really crappy hand, you got crappy genetics, you got crappy, you know, you rolled a crappy character, you know, whatever it is, then that's fine because your initial starting stats don't matter. What matters is how much you level up. That's what matters, right? And so focus on leveling up because you put yourself in a better situation. It might not be as good of a situation as Bill Gates or, or Elon Musk. That's fine, all right? It might not be as, as good of a situation as Super Chad, you know, whatever. Uh, that's fine, but it'll be better than you are now. And that's good. Like, they wouldn't, who doesn't want to be better than they are now? So we can't we can't worry about the circumstances or or, or what happened. You know, having that victim mindset. And so we got to say, okay, well, wherever I am now, that that's that's the hand I'm dealt. Whatever, whoever's fault it is, it doesn't matter. But the focus has to be on getting and, and growing and, and improving that situation. Because when that's the focus. Right then you can improve your city. But whining and complaining and blaming other people and saying it's not my fault, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't improve your situation. It just makes you more negative in your, in your viewpoint. So that's the focus. It's just figure out how can you improve your situation because everyone can. Yeah. No, I like that. That's true. I think, you know, it's, you know, one thing, even though it's, you know, sometimes you wish you could have, you know, have the overnight success. I think the most, I think it would be boring to have the overnight access because like when you have to put in the work and do the challenges, you're actually going and taking the adventure and everything rather than okay. just like, get, I think if you, I think it would, wouldn't be, would it be as exciting if you just had the overnight success, if you didn't, you know, rather if, then you could put in all the work towards something and face all the challenges and adversity. I think that's like, you know, it really makes it the goal worth it. Then you get, you'd be like, oh, you can look back and you're like, well, hey, I did this. I can do something else. Yeah. You got to think about it. I mean, one, one mantra I also uh, subscribe to is I don't want anything I haven't earned. Mm-hmm. Right? Because you can enjoy anything that you haven't earned. If, if you just got stuff, if it was just given to you, it has no meaning to it. It's just like when you're a kid, maybe your dad said, you know, I'm not buying you a bike. You have to earn the money to buy a bike, right? I remember being told that. And he's like, why? And I said, why, 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 why? You know, because you'll appreciate it more when you mm-hmm. have to pay for it, right? That's, right. That's, the, <laughs> that's the thing that these guys don't understand. They're jealous of other guys. They're jealous of, of these people. And it's like, if it was just given to you, then you would not, it would not be meaningful. You, you, would, you would be in a bad situation. I had a coaching client one time that was a, a trust fund baby. Okay. Man, that guy's life was so horrible. I would not trade spaces with him because he lived in the shadow of his father. He he could not. He had to accomplish such great feats in life to do anything, because he was getting 
un, basically unlimited supply of money. So, so what is he, what is he going to, how do you even get to a point where you feel accomplished? You, you see what I'm mm. saying? So if you're, if you're in, in a bad situation, if you dealt, if you were dealt a bad hand in life, you got only, you can, you only got to go up. That's it. Like it's easy for you to have accomplishments and success. If mm. you already are at the top, Man, that's that's not so good. It's not so good. It's really hard to to make improvements from there. So so that's what right. comes down. Like you, I only want what I've earned. I only want what I have actually earned myself because that's the only thing that you will truly find satisfaction and joy in. I like that, man. Well said. Well, hey, man. Uh, you know, th thank you very much for coming on the show. Um, where can you? Uh, they find. I, I put. They already showed your YouTube and stuff. Uh, where is it? Can, can, you mentioned last time you had like a quiz on the website that you did, or work. I'll post that in the description. Where can they find that? Yeah, just just go to bulldogmindset.com. There'll be a little pop up that asks you if you want to take the bulldog quiz. Of course you do, because you want to figure out what your bulldog score is. It'll be from zero to hundred. Just ten questions, and then from there, I will give you your score, and then give you some help with improving that score. So bulldogmindset.com. All right, man. Well, well, hey, thank you very much. And um, I'd like to have you come in on the show, maybe like maybe sometime February or early March again, do another show. I, I like the interaction. We're spinning up some fire game here and some, you know, stuff on mindset that, you know, helping people like, you know, just move forward and everything. And I think it's been, been a very insightful uh, conversation. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks for, thanks for having okay. me on. Rock on. Anytime, buddy. Bye, guys. Okay. Did I get out of that?